So myself, because sitting here listening to you women talk about men and about all of the the dysfunction that we have in our societies and our communities, that's where I feel my role is as a man, is to teach young men how they're supposed to conduct themselves. And these are one way that I'm able to do that because we no longer know our position and our role in society. We, it's, it's gone. It's been, our world was turned upside down 150 years ago and we still have not recovered from that. And then you throw drugs and alcohol and everything else into that and this is what you have today. So I work with these young men that <clears throat> we had games that were, were for warriors. We, our people were warriors. Doesn't mean we were violent, but we were warriors. We were providers and we were protectors. And, and you earn a right to be able to wear your feathers, to wear your paint, to be able to do things, to be able to speak in front of people, but you earn that by being a provider and a protector. And there were things that set the stage for that as a young man that was your family, your uncles, your dads, your, even the women. <laughs> and But these games also were a teaching tool with that. And so our game of lacrosse is something I do today. Ehana woskate unskatapte ka iwo uherakapte. Tokahea takapsicho wo oyakapte. Ehana dakota oyate ke dechil skatapiche. Tanka obadaya ed skatapi nakun bade chaga akan skatapi. Ta skatapi heha nakun kchizap shni chimpshni heun takapsicha skatapche. To where I was on Kanki Han, to where he tawa ta kapsi chashkata pe chimpe hechi ta ha, why I was on ka he you was tekte. Dakota we koshka ga, koshka hana, Dakota we chokhan ohana umta, unspe we chaki apte. He un dena he chumpe. Lacrosse used to be played on large fields with as many as 50 to 100 people on a field and the goals could be as far as a mile apart. Reasons for them playing lacrosse could be anything from conflict resolution between different tribes to settle disputes. It could also be used for healing for relatives that were sick. Uh, I've been playing traditional lacrosse for about four or five years now. I've been playing contemporary lacrosse for going on six, seven years now. The reason why I play traditional lacrosse <clears throat> is because it Reconnects me with my ancestors. <clears throat> it's also a healthy lifestyle. It keeps me physically fit. And it keeps me out of trouble. I play traditional lacrosse for those who can't play, those, those that are sick. The lacrosse stick is an extension of oneself. The ball is sacred in that it represents life, and so all of the players would scramble trying to catch it. We were spiritual beings coming into a physical world. So the Creator gifted us with these games to help us to develop the skills that we needed to live in this physical world. Today there is a movement throughout our Dakota communities to reconnect our youth with our traditional game of lacrosse. We take the value system and the teachings from our traditional lacrosse game and implement it into our modern day game of lacrosse. By doing this we reinstill uh, identity into our youth and we use this to combat a lot of the social ailments that we have in our community, such as high school dropout, suicide, drug and alcohol abuse, self-esteem, and identity issues. Traditionally, lacrosse could be used as a teaching tool for our young men. By having as many as 50 to 100 players out on the field, they say that it was a created chaos. And so these young men would have to learn to remain in control of their emotions. For to lose control of your emotions was looked at as a cowardly thing. Learning how to remain in control of your emotions, to think clearly, and to act decisively, it is said that you would be able to carry these into other areas of your life. Some of these games would teach us skills of physical endurance, skill and agility, and other games would teach us how to have observation and intuition. We started a lacrosse team up in Tokenua, our enemy swim on our reservation, and uh, we had a bunch of kids come out. Now a lot of them are sticking with lacrosse. They're all pretty good lacrosse players, and uh, we take them out to tournaments. And 
focus on contemporary lacrosse, but we incorporate a lot of the traditional values into the modern game. We play a lot of the traditional lacrosse as practice for our contemporary lacrosse team. So one of the uh, requirements for our lacrosse team is that uh, they would have to know some of the language involved in the game. So all the positions were translated and put into the Dakota language. So we had Anapta, which was the defense. Chokaya Najipi would be the midi. Kokab Naji is the goalie. And all, the, all of our uh, players knew the names of their positions and everyone else's positions. And as a coach on the sidelines, I would yell out their uh, commands on the side. So I would tell them, Akichi, Utapi, would be to face off. Itokab Naji would be to box out. Kute would be to shoot. Tapa Gachod Iaye would be past the ball. He took it not a hump, took it a hump of pen. He took it a tile. I tried to know me that we in a pen, Oji or Hakata or Omali Dakota. He said, it took it a hump of Unka. Tako, dear old Steppe. At Kutebe, the Steppe said, you pin it, it's an, you pin it in other way, or pitch out of cover in other way. He was a town head, a hump of penis cut a man, a town head, a youth summer. Do we hear gonna talk to her after the exit? He said, it's a very good one. It's a hana hump of pen, a hump of. I know a girl, one of her king, they took the American in a cup. It's in a nina man, I took the money. It's a picture of a hump of pen, 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 a hump of I went to get a taco with two pairs and then I took a taco with a hump. 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 A Hot <laughs> My grandpa used to tell stories when he played moxin back in the 
50s, 60s, 70s, and they would travel to different districts, and they'd start playing, and they'd play for like seven days, just nonstop. People would take turns sleeping, and singing, and hitting, and finding. My grandpa even said that people would leave with just their underwear on, and just all kinds of crazy things. You ever heard stories of somebody betting their wife away? And so it got pretty serious. They'd lose their houses, and one day everybody would have all this stuff, and then the next day it'd go back and forth like that. And when I was younger, we'd play the old ways where we'd play all night, we'd put $5 on a stick and there'd be nine points and the winner would, we have to get all those points. So it'd take all night and into the next day before somebody won. And then the modern day moxin is a tournament style where you just throw your team's name into a hat and, and just play to the championship game. That, that takes a day or two also, but the longest games is probably take three hours. The shortest game could take 20 minutes if you can't hide or find anybody. But it's all for fun, you know. And it's all just a time to gather and visit your relatives that you haven't seen since the last powwow or maybe since the summer before. Just gamble, but there's also get some serious sometimes too. But those are games that we need to continue to carry on in a good way. You know, even if you get crabby. Or not, you pack that. <laughs> so it said that it was during a time of famine in the Minnesota country that the Dakota people were starving. They weren't able to find any buffalo. So a young man had requested to go up on a hill and to fast. While he was up there fasting, a young buffalo bull had come to him. He instructed him of this game that he was to make. He told him that he needed to go and get the ash tree and the cherry sticks and to create this hoop. So when he went back down to the village, he had found four worthy men and they had constructed a lodge in the middle of the village. They went inside that lodge and they played this game. They said as they rolled this hoop that it left the tracks of the buffalo. They would throw these arrows trying to pierce the heart of the hoop. They then went throughout the village playing this game. After they were, had completed this game, they were able to go out on a buffalo hunt and they were successful. So from that time forward, the people always played this game before they hunted buffalo. And through time, it had turned into a gambling game for men. This game would also teach young boys how to be good hunters, how to develop their skills for their uh, hand-eye coordination. Indian stick pull is a game that was gifted to us by our Eskimo relatives. The concept of this game is to have two opponents that face off, trying to have a tug of war over the stick. Traditionally, grease the stick with some kind of a grease, and so the purpose of this is to strengthen your hand grip for when you're out fishing. <laughs> Chankawa Chipina is our top game. It means to make the wood dance. The young boys would play this game and they would use Ichapsinte or the whip. The tops were made out of pipe stone, buffalo horn, or different types of wood. They would set up obstacle courses on the ice to maneuver their tops through. They would also play a game called the Fighting Buffalo where they would, the two boys would battle each other to see who could knock each other's top out. Oh, what's that? He's a baby! He's a baby archer! He's a Hoshiyama Archer! He's a Hoshiyama Archer! Oh, I see. He's a Hoshiyama Archer! He's a Hoshiyama Archer! He's a Hoshiyama Archer! He's a Hoshiyama Archer! He's a Hoshiyama Arch